Hi everyone, my name is Megan and this is Hanka, and we are PhD students in the Chemlite group. And today I'm going to tell you a bit about the renewable fuels and some of the work that we are doing in the lab. Now, as you are no doubt aware, we are facing an energy crisis as fossil fuels run out and we need to look at other alternatives. These so-called renewable sources include solar power, taking advantage of huge power source in the sky, or wind, which you are probably more familiar with here in Galway. The problem is these sources are intermittent, meaning they are not reliable. You can't just attach a solar panel to the top of your car and expect it to go, especially in Ireland. What is the sun, you might say? This means we have to think of different ways of storing energy for when we need it. There are different ways to do this. One way is to use the spare energy to do a chemical reaction and make fuels, the simplest being hydrogen. These renewable or solar fuels can then be stored and used later. Hydrogen cars, much bigger than the one I have here, already exist in which hydrogen is used to power the car by means of a fuel cell. But a bit more on that later. First, I wanted to show you how you can actually make the hydrogen. So this is a fuel cell. As you can see, there are two sides, the anode and the cathode, separated by a thin membrane. We're going to use this to split water into hydrogen and oxygen by passing an electric current through the water. This is called electrolysis. So here I have some distilled water, which I'm going to add to the anode. There we go. and put the cap back on. I also have some beakers here, which we can catch the hydrogen and the oxygen as it's produced. These are simply attached to the cell with these little tube things. Now I'm going to fill the beakers with some water. This is so we can catch the gases. It also means we'll be able to see the bubbles as the hydrogen and oxygen are formed. Now we need our power source. This could be solar power or whatever. To the positive end, I'm going to attach it to the side that will produce the oxygen and the negative I'm going to attach to the other side where the hydrogen will be produced. There we go. Now for the moment of truth. Let's turn it on. Oh look, you can see the tiny bubbles already moving down the tube. See the there they go. Here we have the oxygen being formed at the anode and being collected here. And on the other side, tiny bubbles of hydrogen from the cathode. Pretty cool if I do say so myself. But what exactly is happening? This is Mariam and we're going to show you how the cell actually works. I'm going to be the negative electrode, the cathode, 
and Mariam here the positive anode. So as we saw before, we start with water, ta-da! The water at the anode is split into oxygen, hydrogen ions and electrons. The hydrogen ions then move through the membrane to the cathode and the electrons, which can't move through the membrane, move through the external circuit also to the cathode. And the oxygen is released. Meanwhile, at the cathode, the hydrogen ions and electrons are combined to form hydrogen gas. This can then be stored and used as a fuel. So that's how we get hydrogen. Let's see if we can make this card go. So this cell is reversible, which means if we plug it in the other way, we can use it as a fuel cell. This means the fuels are continuously consumed by the device and electricity is formed. Electricity that will hopefully power our car. There we go, it's moving. In this case, hydrogen is continuously fed into the anode, where it is split into hydrogen ions, which cross the membrane to reform water with the oxygen. The electrons move through the circuit, and the flow of electrons, well, that's electricity. This then powers the motor. Hopefully real hydrogen cars aren't as prone to crashing.